All right, uh, so I'm gonna be talking about uh, a thing called IPDK, uh, what that is and how we wrote a translation from Psy to this IPDK thing. Uh, and the punchline of IPDK is it's a translation layer uh, across not just switches, but uh, IPUs, DPUs, FPGAs, uh, software accelerated switches, and a couple other things. And if you don't know what any of those things are, I'll explain them. Uh, and also I should say, uh, I am involved in the IPDK project. This is work from a lot of people. So uh, I'll talk briefly, I think most people know this, but you know, Psy is predominantly targeted at switches right now. Uh, IPDK, and I'll talk about what that is, is an abstraction across not just switches, but a whole bunch of other pieces of hardware uh, that not only Intel, but a, a bunch of other companies produce. Uh, and the, the punchline is we've written a translation layer from Psy to IPDK. Uh, and so I'll talk about so, like, how that works, uh, some motivated use cases of why that might be interesting. It might be that we haven't come up with great use cases for this, and maybe your use cases are better, so I'd love to have that conversation. Uh, and it's open source, and I'll point you to the code to show you what, a little bit what it looks like. And I'll do all that in under 15 minutes. Um, so uh, today, and you know, our picture is not as nice as some of the other ones from the talk, you know, the, the main intent uh, of Psy is to, to run uh, as an abstraction across multiple ASICs from different vendors. And you know, on top of that, you would run a, a routing stack of your choice. It might be FBOSS with OpenR, it might be uh, free range routing, it might be something else. Um, but the, there's a whole lot of other things going on in the data center today. Uh, you know, depending on your environment, you might have virtual machines that are actually on the host with some sort of switching or routing local to the device. Uh, you might have physical hosting where you have network policies that you want to implement on physical hosts. Um, there's a bunch of other pieces that you might like to control, and Psy is an interesting control mechanism. And so the, the thought kind of comes like, how do we want to extend, you know, does it make sense to even extend Psy beyond just managing a switch? Uh, and so the, the two use cases we're going to throw out here are uh, infrastructure as a service for physical networking. So that is, you know, if you have a host with multiple NICs, you know, of course you can always run LACP on it, but more and more people are starting to run routing protocols on the, the host itself and, and do ECMP switches, ECMP style decisions coming out of which NIC you want to use. Um, and then second, you might have a, a virtual network where you want to do tunneling to, to, pre to prevent connectivity between hosts that, that aren't allowed to talk to each other. So what is IPDK? Uh, IPDK is the Infrastructure Programmer Developer Kit. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Intel's naming schemes, this is similar to the DPDK or SPDK uh, in naming. You know, there's not a lot of imagination there. But the, the rough idea is there's a bunch of hardware that is completely different for how you program it. You know, you, the way you program a switch is completely different from how you program an FPGA which is completely different how you would program uh, an accelerated software solution like DPDK, uh, and it's completely different how you'd program uh, a new class of hardware uh, that the market is still arguing about what to call, uh, which we're calling either IPDK, the uh, Infrastructure Processing Unit, or DP, uh, or uh, sorry, IPU, which is the Infrastructure Processing Unit, or DPU, which is Data Plane Processing Unit. Um, and, and if folks aren't familiar with those, they're actually very cool and interesting, but not the subject of this talk. Think of it just like another thing of hardware that you might want to control. And if you step back, as a programmer, you're like, well, that's great, but if I pick one of these pieces of hardware and start to program towards it, and I decide I've got the wrong one or I want to add something, as of right now, there's no easy way to, to move your software stack from one of these pieces of hardware to another. There's no abstraction layer. The way you program them is completely different. Uh, and so you're looking at you know, potentially 100% code rewrite, and that's for most people, prohibitive enough that no, no matter how good the new hardware is, 100% code rewrite of your software stack is too much work, so they just don't look at it. And so the point of IPDK is to actually create an abstraction layer across these different pieces of hardware so that you could have a common interface for switches, software switches, uh, and these IPU, DPUs, you know, even FPGAs. Um, and then once you have that uh, common abstraction layer, you can build lots of applications on top. And so for the purpose of this talk, the application we're looking at is actually exposing Psy so that we could tap into all the things that actually implement Psy. For example, you know, FBOSS, uh, you know, Sonic, and other things on top. That, does that make sense so far? I, I'm imagining you all are nodding vigorously with the, the lights I'm having to guess. Um, so why would you do this? Well, so the answer is, uh, you probably wouldn't use this on switches because you know, Psy already natively supports switches, but now you could actually start to run some of these Psy-enabled programs directly on a host. 
uh, or you might run it directly on an IPU or, or something like that. And that starts to look pretty interesting. Um, and so first, you know, in terms of physical networking, it, imagine you have a, a physical host with multiple NICs on it, uh, and you want to have some redundancy of how traffic is, is uh, spread across those NICs. Traditionally, you would run something like uh, LAG or MLAG or LACP, uh, and, and that's great in an L2 network. It's not great. It's actually kind of horrible. I, don't get me started on those protocols. But uh, more and more people are actually looking to run L3 routing protocols across those NICs. And so you actually want to have a, a routing stack running on the host. And so the question is, how do you do that? Well, you know, if you're just going to run pure software and, and you want to use the Linux kernel, that's fine. But if you wanted to go faster than Linux kernel, if you look at something like DPDK, uh, you actually get quite a bit faster than the Linux kernel, then you need to build something on top of that. And that's where IPDK and Psy and you know, maybe something open source like free range routing come in. Uh, or maybe you have some hardware acceleration there. Maybe you have one of these IPUs and DPUs, uh, and you want, you want to accelerate that further. So, so this is an abstraction layer to help you connect some of the existing. It, it's almost like this is the, the link that connects the existing protocols to the underlying hardware. Um, Another thing you might want to do is actually do virtual networking here, where uh, a set of VMs running on one host are only allowed to talk to another set of VMs on another host, and you create a virtual tunnel between them. Uh, you know, again, you're trying to take the existing protocols like OVS and connecting them to the dots so that you actually get whatever the best performance is underneath, whether it is uh, you know, top-end software acceleration like DBDK or, or leverage one or whatever the underlying hardware is there. So those are the use cases. That's why we're doing this. Um, let me jump to the important part, which is the code. Uh, this is all open source. Um, there is a, a website for this, ipdk.io. Uh, uh, the, the GitHub is the ipdk-io, because of course somebody else had taken the word ipdk. Uh, different problem for a different time. Um, there's reasonable documentation of the coverage of the Psy library that we support. Um, fundamental to IPDK, one of the technologies that we use is called P4. Um, actually, quick show of hands. How many people have heard of P4? Reasonably comfortable with it? All right, awesome. Um, that makes this talk easier. So the, one of the, the core technologies of IPDK is, is P4. So the idea is you take a P4 description of your data plane, you drop that into a compiler, it either outputs, no, I can't do that, or it says yes, and let me generate a whole bunch of APIs to, for tables for you to populate. And those APIs uh, use a common framework called TDI, the Table Driven Interface, to, to give you information about what the table is and how to you know, basically do CRUD style operations to them. And once you have that, it's actually pretty straightforward to figure out how to translate Psi down to that layer. Yeah, we have a P4 program that roughly approximates Psi. You know, we drop it into the compiler matching whatever the underlying target is, and then if it says yes, then we get some t uh, TDI tables that we can populate. Um, there's some documentation about how this works. Uh, I don't believe we have 100% PSI API coverage. I, I can guarantee we don't have the MACSEC or, or MPLS uh, translations in there yet, but you, know, you can see how it might be possible. Um, and just to give you a flavor of kind of how this works, is that, uh, maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. I swear I was off the network exactly to prevent that type of thing. There we go. Um, so you imagine this is an entry that takes a Psi route update and translates this into IPDK. So there's a bunch of parsing of, of stuff, but then the, the magic starts here where we actually have the table entry, the TDI entry that is a route entry and we take pieces out of it, and we populate them into the table, we mem copy them over, and we return the, the size status. It's, the good news is there's no magic here. You know, at the end of the day, we're all programming the same pieces of hardware, it's just adding a, a, an additional layer of indirection. And, and you may say, why do you add that layer of indirection? And the answer is to leverage a bunch of existing software. How am I doing on time? OK. Um, so and now I'm off on my talk.
Um, so as you can see, we've got most of the basic routing primitives covered. Uh, VRF is a little bit more advanced. Tunneling is more advanced. But uh, this is still early days. Um, this is active work that is uh, built on top of this. We've also uh, enabled a Netlink listener. Um, so if, if folks aren't familiar with that, that actually takes a, a standard routing stack's output, something like FRR, and translates that down to, to, in this case, SAI, which then translates it to IPDK, which then translates it to the underlying hardware. Uh, it, it is a little bit indirect in terms of that. One could imagine a direct IPDK Netlink listener. But it's, again, it's the code that we had. This is an enabling step. Uh, and you know, going forward, you know, does it make sense to write directly to IPDK? Maybe, but you know, honestly, these are ultimately control plane targets. So these are not super performance sensitive and an extra you know, call step and an extra 100 cycles uh, instructions on, on is really, it, it's not worth the engineering effort at this point to, to work around that. Um, So uh, in terms of next steps, if at all what I'm talking about is interesting to you, uh, check out the ipdk.io website uh, where we talk about, you know, this is just one of many use cases that we actually enable. Um, there's a bunch of demos associated with this. Uh, check out our code structure, um, which is currently a mess in the way that all good code structures are. Um, the, the link to what I specifically showed here is currently under our OVS port. So we've actually taken OVS and have ported a, a version of that to IPDK. Um, the, the PSI translation for IPDK and OVS really have nothing to do with each other, so note that this link will be changing. Um, we provide some feedback to some of the developers that we should keep these things separate. Uh, but uh, associated with that, there's all sorts of other things. There's an Netlink listener. There's an uh, accelerated uh, OVS instance. Uh, there's more so source code coming. Uh, IPDK is part of a larger project uh, that my team is starting in terms of, uh, it's called the uh, Open Infrastructure Project, uh, which if folks haven't heard about that, they should check it out. But this is kind of a part of a, a much larger movement, which just happens to have a tie into SI. So uh, with that, I think I'm open to taking questions, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, questions? Thank you, Rob. Uh, good presentation. I have a question. Uh, so I did not understood completely, but a little bit whatever I get it. So on the SI side, we have introduced a parallel infrastructure, which is called as GPE, Generic Programmable Extension. Okay, and what it does, it gives you a, a clean interface for any programmable pipelines, uh, and you can bypass the SI complexity and the time we spend on the community, right? And it's very uh, fungible. Uh, so my question is that, have you looked at it? Have you thought about IPDK using it? Because then you don't have to go through the SI complexity. And you do still have a back and forth referencing of the objects. So I am familiar with two different initiatives that are very similar, and we'll have to talk up through, maybe not even online, how they're, they're different. So there's uh, PINs, which may be related. It's uh, programmable infrastructure in SI or in Sonic. Uh, and I think that translates down to this, this part of that. So PINs is the control plane? Uh, that's the controller which is sitting uh, next to Sonic, uh, but it uses the GPE interface, correct? Okay. So, so that's the layer that, I, that I'm familiar with. Yeah, so that's the control plane layer, but I think for IPDK, probably GPE is more relevant to you. Yeah. Um, it, it would certainly be good to, to look at. Um, one of the things that is, is a little bit funky, and I think as a community we're going to have to work through, which is you know, if we're using Psy to bypass Psy, does it make sense just to work directly at the IPDK layer? Uh, and you know, where certainly in a hardware perspective, generally f configuring for SI makes a bunch of assumptions, uh, and you know, those assumptions have implications on how, how, how hardware resources are allocated. And then the question is, you know, are those always going to be the case? So you know, certainly there are P4 instances where, for example, you don't have L2 or L3 tables. And you know, certainly working with SI, you know, generally that's an assumption. And so, Anyways. Right, right, right. So you're right. So Psi, uh, you want to use for more uh, traditional constructs, but uh, if you have more dynamic constructs, uh, which are not present in the Psi pipeline, GP is the uh, way to go as we are progressing. That's what we are suggesting. Uh, definitely, we'll take a look. Thank you for that. Right, thank you. Um, Rob, quick question. On uh, 
the IPDK as I've been tracking it, there was uh, OBS layers sort of put on uh, the host interface. Uh, the motivation you talked about bringing Psi uh, is to try to understand uh, next level there is to bring FRR or other sort of si uh, sonic constructs there or there's a different uh, direction? So, um, and stop me if this gets too far off topic. Uh, the world, is, and I think everyone here would appreciate it, is a bit schizophrenic in terms of what the preferred control plane protocols are. Uh, and uh, I think at the IPDK level, we're trying to be as agnostic to that as possible. And so certainly there are people who are interested in, for example, running Sonic on an IPU, or would actually like to run Sonic on a DPDK accelerated vSwitch. Uh, and we have implemented the side to IPDK translation layer to enable those types of use cases. And there are people who are, are happy with stock OVS and would just like to see that run faster in terms of a DPDK backend. And so we've also tried to enable that use case. Um, the, the intent really is to support what people are asking for without being too uh, uh, prescriptive about it. Uh, which one actually makes sense, I, I feel like is in more of a religious war, which I'd rather just avoid and just implement both. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you all.